Still no breakfast? I'm beginning to suspect foul play. Silicon flowers are so much more practical than your ordinary plant-based models. No more watering. Just charge the battery and give them a dusting once a week. <laughs> I suppose I should at least pay the wool bill. Donk is getting a little too independent, if you ask me. Any news on the breakfast front, Gromit? Honey, how sweet of you, Gromit. <laughs> but where are the eggs and toast? Done to a turn. My compliments to the chef. But I'm still one egg short of a breakfast. Cracking eggs, Chuck. Now that's what I call a breakfast feast. Wasn't so difficult, was it, lad? With a hearty plate of eggs and toast under me belt, I'm ready to take on the world. Gromit, I've a strange feeling this is the day our fortunes are going to change. Morning, Wallace. May I have a word? Uh, if it's about yesterday's uh, um, little mishap... Oh no, you see... I can assure you it, it was an accident, Mr. Penier, and I'll certainly pay for the damage to your grocery shop. I was just putting the Sniffer 3000 through its paces. It's still only a prototype, you know. Oh, I realize that, Mr. Wallace. And what better place to test out a cheese detector than in a shop with such an excellent selection of cheeses? Happen. But you'll still have to pay for the damage, I'm afraid. Yes, of course. 
I'll put it all right. Though funds are, how can I put this, a little tight at the moment. Only until our new business is up and running. Aye, well, that's what I'm here to talk about. I understand you and Gromit are in the honey business now. Fresh deliveries daily, from B to you. <laughs> ah, well, perhaps I can help you get on your feet. I'm having my annual sounding of the Crumpets Festival, and I'm clean out of honey. Can you deliver 50 gallons? 50 gallons? By tonight? Tonight? It'll more than cancel your debt, and it'll be good advertising for you. What do you say? I say... I say yes! We're in business, lad! Heads up, no time for slacking. From B to U has landed its first major order. 50 gallons of honey by tomorrow. I want this place to be a hive of activity. It's your chance to show the world what sort of workers you are. They're certainly buzzing with excitement. Or maybe they're hungry. Did you remember to feed them this morning, Gromit? Never mind, lad. I'll do it. Flowers, the perfect meal for a hungry hive. The bees love my motivational posters. Nothing like an inspirational poster to boost worker productivity. For some reason, my boys aren't terribly fond of this one. Uh, bon appetit. A hole. Hmm, not exactly a flood, is it? Hmm. Flowers, Gromit. That's the weak link in our production chain. We need more flowers. The remote control for my Sniffer 3000. Too bad about the teasing problems. Still, this might come in handy. Keeping busy, lads. Yikes! Ah, there's the hatch from me rocket ship. Remember that moon holiday, Gromit? My workers are very devoted to their queen. Nothing I need. Hmm, place could use a good spring cleaning. That hinge is awfully loose. I'll have to see to that. Any more honey to speak of? Not enough flowers to tip the balance yet. Not to worry, I've got a few ideas.
Now where can I find a whole lot of flowers in a hurry? Beautiful morning, Mr. Wallace. I'm pleased to see you've emerged from your subterranean lair. No flowers in here. There's nothing growing here. And whose fault is that? You had a garden, Wallace, but you raised it to the ground to feed your silly bees. Now, you're making eyes at mine across the fence. But you shan't be plucking any of my blooms. Kindly reserve your green fingers for number 62. Happened to his little cricket bat. Awfully long drop. It's a comfort to know we're well stocked with biscuits. The living room door's stuck. Oh right, it's a storage room now. Spot of gardening, have you, Miss Flit? Working my green fingers to the bone. But the hard work appears to be paying off. Indeed it does. Blooms everywhere. I call it my purple paradise. It certainly looks delicious. I mean, I imagine it would look delicious if you were an insect. You mean, if I were a bee? Well... Now you mention it. You want to feed my flowers to your bees? That is, if you don't mind. How many would you like? As many as you can spare. Oh, you can have all you want, Mr. Wallace. Oh, much obliged, Miss Flit. Here, you can jolly well grow your own. Uh, righto. There now, with hard work and a little luck, you should have a nice bed of flowers in two or three months. I can't wait two or three months. I've got a deadline. This evening. Ugh, you poor simple man. Nothing grows that quickly. I wonder. Rex Armstrong's quick grow muscle formula. Watch them sprout in seconds. Hmm. If it works on people, perhaps I could adapt it to work on flowers. Three miracle ingredients. Groating, Energize, Strongium. Well, I need a miracle, and fast. It shouldn't be too tricky to knock up a batch myself. 
Then we'll see who's got the grandest garden in West Wallaby Street. The hive will be humming in no time. Can't take an old soldier by surprise. Morning, Major Crumb. It is, if you don't mind enemy invasions. I beg your pardon? Didn't you get my message? Received intelligence of a major air assault. Expect the sirens to sound any minute. Hope you know where your nearest air raid shelter is. I do recall something about that, but Major Crumb, are you sure you're not mistaken? I know, I know, I've made predictions before, but I'm not crying wolf. This time, I've got proof. A jar? It's what's inside the jar that counts. Incontrovertible evidence that the enemy is on the move. Does it? I can only see a snail. Of course it's a snail. But what's she trying to tell us? That's the important thing. Uh, what is she trying to tell us? Look at her, man. She's retreated into her shell in the middle of the day. And that means only one thing. It means she knows trouble is about to strike from the heavens. Law of nature, Wallace. Loaded in France during the war, never wrong yet. You're looking at my case, aren't you, Wallace? Well, I suppose I was, Major. Bet you'd like to know what's inside. I am curious, yes. Ha! This case is packed full of government issue protein bars. Protein? Rations, Wallace. Emergency rations for... Emergencies, obviously. Been stockpiling them since the war. Enough nutrition in them to feed a man under fire for a whole day. And very tasty they look, too. Tasty? They're flour, but packed with high-strength protein. I'd love to try one. Out of the question, I'm afraid. You don't have clearance. And besides, protein bars are only issued in the event of civil emergencies. Orders are orders, Wallace. I thought you might find this useful, Major Crumb. A helmet? By George Wallace, there's nothing like a good helmet. Makes a fellow want to put himself in the path of projectiles. If you know what I mean. Couldn't you spare just one protein bar? Stop this insubordination at once, man! They are for emergencies only, when supply lines are down and a man's got no other way of keeping his strength up. But if, as you say, we're expecting some kind of airborne incursion... Indeed we are! Expecting the air raid sirens any minute! Good man, Wallace. I see you at least appreciate the seriousness of the situation. Now, spread the word. If people don't believe what an old soldier has to say, perhaps they'll listen to the snail. No point in showing her to me, old man. I'm already aware of the danger. Show her to the others, the unbelievers. Ah, Mr. Wallace! Mr. Wallace, I've got something for you. Much obliged. Don't forget, Mr. Wallace. That looks like... Can it really be... Cheese? Indeed it is, Wallace. Fensleydale, your favorite. And am I to take it that these are... Yes, 
free samples. Go on, duck in. Don't mind if I do, Mr. Paneer. One for now. And one for later. Don't forget, Mr. Wallace, 50 gallons by sunset. Pity it's closed. Oh, I could murder a sausage roll or two. Now that's a fine looking post box. It would make a good chassis for my honey powered vacuumatic. That's tomorrow's project. Landlord would be interested in subscribing to my honey service. No, no sense in looking for new orders when I haven't fulfilled the first. Hey, up, Wallace, love. How's business? Oh. So, Wallace, in the honey business now, I hear. Oh, you've heard the buzz, have you? <laughs> Oh, oh, indeed I have. It's all over town. It'll never get off the ground. Stupid idea, if you ask me. And nobody did. Couldn't get honey out of a honey jar, that one. Excuse my husband. He's a right misery gut sometimes. Do you know anything about snails, Mrs. Gabberly? I know they eat them in continental parts. Well, yes, but do you think there's anything special about this one? To be honest, I couldn't rightly tell. That doesn't make any sense. Uh-oh. Hey, it's not closing time yet. So, might you be interested in signing up for my honey deliveries, Mrs. Gabberly? Fresh daily? Ooh, I should say so. I'm partial to a spot of honey for my tea. Where's the money? We'll never see honey for tea. Or breakfast, for that matter. Oh, shut up, you. Our Wallace knows what he's doing. He's got a head for business. Is that a head? I took it for a first nip. <sighs> Pay him no mind. Ta-da! Bye then! That's nice. I'll leave that be. I, I, I noticed you received my petition for early release of the Sniffer 3000, Constable Dibbins. Yes, and I notice it's attracted the signatures of just one man and his dog. We're only appealing for natural justice. But your blinking cheese detector thing of me, what do you call it, destroyed an entire grocery store. Uh, teething problems. It's still only a prototype. A prototype? It's a villain, if you ask me. A diabolical device. You can see that in its face. My machine isn't evil, Constable Dibbins. It's just got a short fuse and a few loose nuts. Hmm, we'll see. I'm going to formally interview this glorified Tinkan of yours, and if it can convince me that it's not a menace to society, then perhaps I'll release it into your custody. You there, prisoner. Kindly look at me when I'm talking to you. Missed. Not on, I'm afraid. The sniffer doesn't work that way, Constable Gibbons. You've got to... I'm conducting this interview, Wallace, if you don't mind. Fear not, my little cheese-sniffing friend. Soon have you out of there. Well, 
if that's how he wants to play it, then he can stay in here until he rusts, for all I care. We've had our little chat. And? I'm afraid there's no talking to your sniffer. Hardwired for criminality, I'd say. Well, if it isn't Wallace. I had a notion you'd be nosing round the police station this morning. Can you see fit to grant my opinion? Not on your Nelly. That heap of nuts and bolts is now but trouble. Couldn't give me a single straight answer when I tried to interrogate it. It only responds to certain commands. I know, I programmed it. Perhaps you could try a gentler approach? Well, I'll have another chat with it. More friendly like. Oh, yes. Oh, much obliged, Constable Dibbins. I ain't promising nothing, mind. Time we had a little chat. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Don't know why I bother. I'm too soft, me. No change, I'm afraid. And its moral compass seems to be badly malfunctioning. May I show you something, Constable Dibbins? Is it important? It might be. That's a snail, Wallace. Do you notice anything peculiar about it? Only the person what's holding it. For a moment, Mr. Paneer, Major Crumb wanted me to show you this. That's a snail, Mr. Wallace. I know. Why are you showing me a snail? Well, it's in its shell, you see. And according to Major Crumb, when a snail goes into its shell during the day, it means we can expect untold airborne activity of an unpleasant nature. Go home, Wallace, and get some rest. Reckon you've been overdoing the inventing? I realize this may seem a trifle irregular, but Major Crumb insisted I show you this. It's... Uh, uh, oh. A snail? In my garden? Have you lost your mind, Wallace? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. Oi, come back here, you thieving rascal. That's my tea bag. I won't have you threatening that dear little creature. Not what is in my garden. You've come buzzing back, Mr. Wallace. As a bee to a blossom, eh? I wonder where Major Crumb disappeared to. Wallace! Thank heavens you made it to the shelter! I'd given you up for lost! Caught in the crossfire, were you? You've got 
to get your mind off the carnage up there. Would you like to hear one of my old war stories? I'd help pass the time. Well, I hate to... Uh... Oh, of course you would. I brought visual aids. <laughs> What a face! That's me kitted out for heavy combat. That helmet took many a dent before the war was through. Without it, I could have become seriously loopy. Take my advice, Wallace. Never go into battle without a regulation helmet like the one in this picture. Anyway, I was peeling the arrow when a bomb went off in the distance. <clears throat> Who's that fellow? That's me as a young recruit, off to basic training. How I cried when they cut off my golden curls. But I cheered up as soon as they issued me with a beautiful set of dog tags. Dashed useful dog tags. If you happen to forget your rank or name, you've got it right there. Never go into battle without your dog tags, Wallace. I can still uh, uh, Now, there's a sight. That's me posing with mother next to my 40 millimeter bofers. Look at the size of that monster. Big Betty, we called her. The gun, not my mother. Sounds like you were quite a soldier, Major Crumb. Well, Wallace, why the past tense? Uh, oh dear. Once a soldier, always a soldier. Something you civilians will never grasp. And I'd be happy to prove it by charging into the fray. That is, if I had a sturdy helmet, which I have. But I couldn't go into battle until I'd been officially recommissioned. And I'd need to find someone to take charge of this shelter and distribute the protein bars. Gromit could do the job. Private Gromit? Can I entrust my precious cache of Grotein bars to a Pongo? Perhaps so. He's proven himself a trusty foot soldier. Yes. If I am called away to the front, I'd feel comfortable leaving Private Gromit in charge. But I haven't been recommissioned. Last night's bedtime snack. Gorgonzola makes a nice change from Wensleydale. This core box has been a boon for Gromit. No matter where he is in the house, he's never far from his master's voice. That'll put me right to sleep. Oh? Heh <laughs> trap door. Flip frying pan. That was my birthday present for Gromit last year. Cold toast. Shame to let it go to waste. No more bread. Uh, no thanks.
wouldn't be prudent. I don't think squirrels like cheese. Here you are, little fella. Try some toast. Yes, do feed him. I'm sure the little mite's hungry. What are you looking for, exactly? You're persistent in your attentions this morning, Mr. Wallace. She's already had her breakfast, surely. Uh, I wonder, Miss Flit, if you would be so kind as to, uh, hand me that tea bag. Tea bag, Mr. Wallace? What tea bag? The one on your, um. Uh, ooh. Are you feeling quite well, Mr. Wallace? Perhaps you'd like to give the purple pansies a sniff. You'd have to, uh, lean over, of course, but... I see no point in leaning over and sniffing my purple pansies. I'm giving them the cold shoulder until they decide to shape up and bloom for me. I think not. Uh... They say that the blooms lower down on the plant give off a sweeter scent. Is that so? Uh, yes. You'll discover if you lean way down that... The topmost blooms are perfectly adequate to my needs. Thank you. Hmm. <sighs> Water's all right, but growth formula would be faster. What are you on about? Again, Mr. Wallace? I'm flattered. Well, well, look who's back. Return to the scene of the crime, have we? Oh. There's Miss Sniffer 3000, banged up like a common criminal. Oh, breaks my heart. That cheese detector's not a bad machine, just a bit over keen. It's all the energites in its system. Energites? It seems to me, yes. Energites is one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's Quick Grow Muscle Formula. I used my last Energite battery to fuel the sniffer. I'll have to get it back if I want to finish the formula. The sniff... That mattress looks awfully hard. It's just as well the sniffer 3000 goes into sleep mode automatically. Fancy some cheese, Officer Dibbins? Don't mind if I do. This cheese, it doesn't come with strings attached, does it? Not string cheese, no. It's Gorgonzola. It's an attempted bribe, that's what it is. I'm watching you, Wallace. My poor Sniffer 3000. I only just put the finishing touches on it yesterday, and it's already fallen afoul of the law. Ha! 
How long do you intend to hold my for 3,000, Constable Dibbins? As long as the law requires. It's not malicious. It just malfunctions from time to time. Is that so? And sometimes it short circuits when it gets overheated. Perhaps it does. Why, why don't you try <clears throat> talking to it once more? All right. Once more. You there, prisoner. Kindly look at me when I'm talking to you. But Constable Dibbins, the sniffer can't understand you. It's only a... An impudent scoundrel of a whatever call it. Not a good idea, that. I already did that. Fear not, my little cheese-sniffing friend. Soon have you out of there. That mattress looks awfully hard. Just as well the Sniffer 3000 goes into sleep mode automatically. The Sniffer doesn't work that way, Constable Dibbins. You've got to... I'm conducting this interview, Wallace, if you don't mind. That won't help. I already did. But Constable Dibbins, the Sniffer can't understand you. It's a... An imp... His attitude, he can rot in jail as far as I'm concerned. Why do I listen to you, Wallace? That heap of scrap hasn't changed its ways, and never will. Have you brought it, Mr. Wallace? Forget, Mr. Wallace, 50 gallons by sunset. But those be... Uh, I couldn't help but notice the flowers on your window ledge, Mrs. Gabberly. Aye, uh, lovely, aren't they? Bring a touch of summer to the town square. Especially the purple pansies. Always been partial to pansies, me. You should see the flat. It's full of them. Uh, blinking weeds, if you ask me. Can't abide them. Oh, go and suck a lemon, you moaning mini. Ah. Oh, now look what you've done, you clumsy old. And open up that window when I'm yelling at you. All right. <laughs> but only to prove your insults don't get to me anymore. <laughs> I can deflect them all. Is that so? I'd be happy to take these flowers off your hands, Mrs. Gabberly. That is, if they make your husband unhappy. That's a good reason to keep them to my way of thinking. But go ahead if you want them. Much obliged. I think not. Drop by any time. Mr. Gabberly! I suppose you've an insult for me and all! No, I've no insult for you. Perhaps not. Sky is blue, and still it rains on yours truly. Why does everything happen to me? The sky is blue, and still it rains on yours truly.
No. No good, I'm afraid. Felicity is partial to purple plants, I think. Felicity is partial to purple plants, I think. <laughs> 